Hey guys, welcome to another video where we'll be working on my appliances. Uh, the reason why we're starting up this video at the bench is because we will actually be repairing the circuit board at a component level. Uh, but let's go get in the house now and pull this thing out of the washer and kind of show you guys what's going on. So the problem we have with it is if we put it into the self-test or diagnostic mode, we get air F32. Now to do this self-test, all that you have to do is any of these buttons other than the power or the start cycle button, when the unit's plugged in, uh, you don't have to have any of the screen on. Um, so you just have it plugged in, screen's blank, and you'll hold down any of these buttons. So I just do the uh, soil level one, but any of your working buttons, if you have a problem with a button, um, just hold it down for three seconds, let go for three seconds, hold it down for three seconds, let go for another three seconds. And then this final time you just hold it on until the actual screen comes up. So you'll get an 88, all of these lights will show up and then it'll go through its error codes that it's having. And then um, you, after you go through all the error codes, then you can cycle through some test modes on it. Um, we'll look at that here near the end of the video. Uh, let's pull this washer out and actually get the control board out of it. Okay, so also what we're going to do is take this top cover off here. There are three screws. Uh, I just recommend just using the quarter inch drive because you're going to need it again on the inside. Uh, but these you can take off with a Phillips head, but just use the quarter inch drive because you're going to need it here in a second. Okay, once you have that out, you have this quarter inch, and that's what I was mentioning. This one's not actually Phillips here, so you have to use a quarter inch to get it off. Go ahead and remove that, and then disconnect all of these wires. Uh, a flathead might help, but you can just use your finger and kind of get them all out of there. Okay, so now we have everything disconnected. We can remove this control board. Okay, so here we are on the bench with the control board and its little cover on it. So let's go ahead and get this cover off. Uh, we really just have these two little snap tabs here. And then it kind of tilts up and then pulls out. Uh, that one kind of caught there. All right. And then this is not screwed in at all. It's just held in by little tabs as well. Okay, so what's wrong with this thing anyways? Well, I've already told you that it's a bad relay and I'll go ahead and spoil it for you. It's this relay that's, uh, it's been desoldered out of the board so I could test it, but I wanted to show in the video the full procedure of uh, how to remove one too, just in case somebody that's watching this is fixing their own and has never desoldered something before. Uh, let's go through and see how I figured it was bad. Uh, so I took it out and I just put 12 volts on the relay and said nothing happened. So then I kind of looked at it some more to see. So what we have is the uh, this trace and this one uh, that is the coil there. We're in the mega ohms right there, and that coil should be you know maybe 1k at most. Uh, but we're in the mega ohm, so we know that's blown. It's like wide open, uh, and here is a good one. So this is our new replacement part. And it is 710 ohms there. So yeah, that's a good one. Uh, here's another good one in circuit. I wanna show one thing though, so that way somebody that may be new, you see how shiny this board is? That's cause they coated it with conformal coating to pretty much kind of waterproof the board there. So sometimes when you're probing things on here, uh, you go there and there. That there's actually a connection there. I'm just not digging in, so I gotta like really dig in there to uh, to get a reading off of that. So you know, one way to help make sure you're getting through the coating is so I'm on the same pad there, but I'm getting no reading there. Make sure you dig in and actually get a reading before you say you're good. So you know this these two uh, probes are on the same pin, and you're getting no reading. So just if you can't dig into it enough because of the conformal coating, get you a little exacto knife or something and just dig off some of that conformal coating or knock it off real quick. So that way then you can come in 
and get your connection made there. So, yep, uh, just something to be aware of when you're working on something like this is you may read something as open circuit, but it's not really open circuit. Uh, now let's actually go over getting this thing out of the board. So you're going to need really one of two things if you're kind of a do-it-yourself verb. Um, you're either going to need the stuff called solder wick uh, and some flux, or you're going to need a little handheld desolder pump. These work as well, but um, I'm going to be using a desoldering gun because I have one. Uh, this is just an automated version of this. So uh, this you do need a soldering iron to go against it as well. But let's um, let's go ahead and put some flux down on the board. It makes your life a whole lot easier if you're new to this stuff. Definitely flux is your friend. Don't use uh, pipe solder flux though. Uh, Uh, that's the wrong pen. There we go. This one. And so there we go. This is our bad relay. Uh, we know it's bad. We can go ahead and verify again that it's bad. So this relay is a 12 volt relay. So if it was a good relay, let me say yep, I'm on 12 volts. If I were to put 12 volts through it like this, you would hear a click, it would click, and then you would have continuity here. Uh, you also may still have a good coil in there, but have a burnt up contact in there. So it's, it's another good thing to check once you have it out of circuit to do this. And if, if it clicks, you hear clicking, oh, you might think it's good. You still want to do that continuity check there and make sure. And yeah, as you can see, we're open circuit. It's OL. So we have no connection there, even though we have 12 volts. Change that to DC. See, we have our 12 volts. I just have my probes backwards, but 12 volts on there. So we know that we do in fact have that on. Uh, and I could have this hooked up backwards, but it doesn't matter because the coil is fried. Definitely check your data sheet. The polarity does matter because it'll just kick the thing the wrong direction. Uh, but since this one's bad, there's no actual testing it like that. Let's take this good one and we'll see which way is the right way. Let's see. All right, so we got to click that way. And I got to change. Yep, so now it is closed. So yep, we've closed it and then we can open it back up and there we go. Relay is open like it's supposed to be. So we got a good relay. Uh, obviously this is a brand new one, but uh, this is how you can test the relay and verify that, hey, this is in fact a bad relay. Hopefully this will fix this unit. I haven't actually test to make sure that I have signal coming out of the chip that uh, drives these, but uh, I believe this will be all what's wrong with it. So. Let's put that relay back in there. All right, so a trick to get something like this on there flat when you're working from it from one side is go ahead and tin the hole. And then there we go. So I melted the solder on that pin, pushed the relay back in and now it's in there pretty even and we can just solder it the rest of the way in. Okay, so now we got the new relay installed, we got it cleaned up, but one of the things you want to take into consideration here is this is mains AC voltage right here. So they coated this thing in conformal coating, like I mentioned in the beginning, to kind of waterproof this and it's for safety. So when you desolder something like this on a waterproof board like this, you're going to want to put some more conformal coating back on. I like this MG Chemicals, but you use whatever conformal coating you want to use. Uh, you could even get away with some clear nail polish if that's all you had available, but you're definitely going to want to uh, 
put some conformal coating back over those pins you just desoldered on here. Uh, make sure that we don't put ourselves in any sort of danger there in case this thing gets wet, because it is isn't a wet environment inside a washer. So, I mean, water's not supposed to make it up there, but it can potentially, if something goes wrong with your connection. Okay, and then for putting this thing back in here, all you gotta do is drop it in there. The uh, tab that the screw goes in is the opposite side of all these. So all the connectors are on the top and that tab's on the bottom. And this can only go on one way. You got this little holes that goes in and snaps back on. Okay, so let's go uh, put this thing back inside the washer and test it out. One thing to mention is that I'm going straight to the control board because I've already diagnosed and know that this is the problem with this unit. It also could be your pump. Your pump could be clogged or you could have a bad pump. Uh, I just, I know I have a bad relay on the control board and that's what I'm showing in this video. Uh, a quick way to test your pump to at least make sure you don't have a bad uh, motor in there is check the winding. So this one's your recirculation pump here. It comes out to about 37 ohms. Uh, and then our, our actual drain pump, which is the one that we're testing, should be between 14 and 18 ohms, if I remember right from the spec sheet. And I got 19 ohms. I've already pulled the pump out and tested it. I know my pump works. Um, to take the pump out, all you have to do is take this uh, back panel off so let me move the camera. You just have to take this back panel off and tilt it up and then there's three screws on the bottom of the pump and you can remove the pump. Uh, I have no need to, to test it further, so we're not gonna be doing that. Point of this video is to show how to repair the control board. While we're putting this in here, one of the things to think about is, you know, you may not have any experience soldering. And, I wouldn't say that this is a very good first thing to learn to solder on. So you know, these control boards, uh, they're not terrible, but it's kind of hard with all that um, conformal coating on there to solder them. But uh, I, I wouldn't let that completely discourage you from doing this yourself because, I mean, come on, it's like 200 bucks for a control board versus fixing it yourself and not having to pay 200 bucks for one, so I don't know. It's kinda, what's your risk tolerance there? All right, so before we screw back in the back side of this, I got it plugged in, pushed in, and we're gonna test it real quick, and then we'll get it all the way back in its home. So we're gonna do the diagnostic mode on it. Okay, so now it's in diagnostic mode. Now let's go through our different tests. And see, now our drain pump is now working. So C8 is the drain test. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and don't let the soldering really discourage you from this trying to do this repair yourself because it's really not that terrible. And the main takeaway from it is it's a $2 part and anybody that you're going to call to do this stuff anymore, 
they're just going to come out and swap the whole control board and they're going to charge you the service fee and to change the control board. So if you know that you have a bad relay, I recommend doing this yourself. And for you guys wondering for the part number, I will have that down in the description of the video. It's just no point in me reading a long part number when I can write it out. So just check the description of the video for the part number. I may put some links to some tools in there too that uh, might help some people out trying to, trying to do their own repair themselves. For you guys that might be thinking about subscribing to the channel, the next video is probably going to be on working on one of these batteries. Uh, I don't think I'll be fixing it in that video, but I will at least be going through some of the diagnostics on it and uh, how to how to check what's going on inside one of these batteries. So uh, definitely keep an eye out for that. Uh, I also have some other automotive videos coming up soon. So yeah, I hope you guys like the video and I'll see you in the next one.